Donald Trump faces a new witness today. It is Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman of the White House National Security Council, who apparently was concerned about what he was hearing on some of these phone calls, as it now seems everyone was other than Donald Trump. So on Monday evening, the New York Times broke news that Vindman, the top Ukraine expert on the NSC, plans to testify on Tuesday that he directly heard Trump, quote, appeal to Ukraine's president to investigate one of his leading political rivals, a request the aide considered so damaging to American interests that he reported it to a superior. Which is like a bombshell news headline, according to news headlines that declare it a bombshell. But from my point of view, it's like, okay, okay so he was on the phone call and he was concerned about it too. We've seen the phone call, I'm concerned about it. I don't need him to tell me to be concerned, I'm already concerned. We're all concerned, it's concerning. But anyway, it's another person who is going to testify that this was an issue. And there's a particular reason why it might be a little bit harder for the Republicans to discredit this one. The Times noted that Vindman's opening statement, quote, is full of references to duty and patriotism. And given his military service, he, quote, could be a more difficult witness to dismiss than his civilian counterparts. And that is, of course, because he served in the US military. He's a lieutenant colonel, has a very high ranking position in our military. Additionally, he is a Purple Heart recipient because he was damaged by shrapnel from an IED in Iraq, which is just about as specifically a thing that protects you from criticisms from the supposedly pro military Republican as anything, at least hypothetically. But it doesn't actually work out that way in practice because despite the time saying it's gonna be hard for them to discredit him considering his military service, the right has found a way. And so I wanna give you an idea of the ways that they've been attacking him just over the past 12 to 18 hours or so. So we start off with Laura Ingram. Nobody should, but we're going to. Here is what she had to say about Vindman. He's a decorated colonel, by the way, in the Iraq war. But because Colonel Vindman emigrated from Ukraine, along with his family when he was a child and is fluent in Ukrainian and Russian, Ukrainian officials sought advice from him about how to deal with Mr. Giuliani, though they typically communicated in English. Now, wait a second, John. <laughs> Here we have a US national security official who is advising Ukraine while working inside the White House, apparently against the president's interest, and usually they spoke in English. Okay, so before we get into the, the actual substance of what she's saying there or attempting to say, let's just note that to talk about the big foreign policy news of the day, she brings on a guy who tried to make the legal case for America torturing its enemies, and Alan Dershowitz, a guy who's any sense of respectability or duty to country above an individual politician who supports fled literally decades ago. It's a weird panel, let's just acknowledge that. But here's what she's saying is, he's a lieutenant colonel. Oh, that's gonna hurt us because we like to pretend that we support the military, but wait, he was born in Ukraine. And because he was born in Ukraine and speaks Ukrainian and is on the NSC and has long dealt with officials in Ukraine, they asked him for a bit of advice. And she apparently is trying to portray that as a disqualification. Note that she didn't say that he offered the advice or that he served as an advisor, just that they requested it on a very narrow subject. Don't have to worry about him anymore. Vindman, everything he says is a lie. His decades of service in the US military and inside US government, you can cast that aside now. And by the way, you might be able to find something that actually legitimately lets you cast those things aside. The idea though that a Ukrainian official asked him for advice when his job for a long time has been an expert on Ukraine and a person who works with Ukraine, that's not quite as surprising as Laura Ingram tries to pretend that it is there. But here's the thing, it's one thing for Laura Ingram to come up with a talking point to try to establish a narrative. It's another thing for it to become effectively the go-to position for right wingers in the media within just 12 hours or so. So here is Sean Duffy, the very similar argument. When I asked you about Colonel Vindman, the very first thing you said was he was Ukrainian. So, so yes or no, do you, do you trust Ambassador Bill Taylor more because he was born in the United States? Where does the location no. of his birth well, matter? Well, Mark Meadows, who I'm, I think I'm, you agree with, was born in France. Is, is he right. pro-French by definition? That's a pretty stunning comment well, you made I, just there. And it's remarkable so and notable given that Laura Ingram last night and in, in her apparent talking points brought it up as well. So I read his statement, John, and I'm sure you did as well. Um, and it seems very clear that he is incredibly concerned about Ukrainian defense. 
I don't know that he's concerned about American policy, but his main mission was to make sure that the Ukraine got those weapons. I understand that we all have an affinity to our homeland where we came from. Like me, I'm sure that Vidman has the same affinity. So look, he he apparently his family's from Ireland or whatever. And so the host then asked him, so do you have more of an affinity for Ireland than America? And of course, Sean, Sean Duffy doesn't actually respond to that because he wants to assert that you can disregard this guy. He's not even getting into the whole they asked him for advice thing. He's just saying simply because this guy was born in Ukraine, we don't have to listen to anything that he says, which is a novel position, a new position for the right to take. I hadn't heard that before when it comes to countries like Ukraine. And so he says there that he's really worried about Ukrainian defense. I don't know if he worries about American policy. like. Again, simply because someone served in the military, I'm not Meghan McCain on The View this morning. I don't think that that means that you're free from any criticism, but you have to explain why you're criticizing them. This guy served through the US military all the way to becoming a lieutenant colonel, was injured along the way, almost died when an IED exploded. And Sean Duffy thinks that he can just casually say, this guy cares more about Ukraine's defense than ours. He served in the US military. It's just a bizarre narrative. I don't know if it's gonna be successful, but I do know that this is the only tactic they have. And it's filtered all the way down to Fox and Friends as well. Here's Brian Kilmeade. So if you look at this Lieutenant Colonel's background, he's got a purple heart, he got hit by an IED in Iraq. We also know he was born in the Soviet Union, emigrated with his family, young. He tends to feel simpatico with the Ukraine. What the hell does that mean? He tends to feel simpatico with Ukraine. I have a feeling that prior to the news last night, more likely this morning, Brian Kilmeade knew about as much about Vindman as I did. And the idea that he can just casually say that, yeah, I've been tracking his career and throughout his career, he's pretty much always sided with Ukraine. That is, that's an interesting, bold position to take for Brian Kilmeade. Anyway, so this is this is all of them now. So they're all asserting that because this guy was born in Ukraine, you don't have to worry about him confirming the fact that he found it very concerning that Donald Trump wanted to withhold military aid for Ukraine until he got these investigations. Although again, I will point out that although sure, it's great to have another witness that apparently agrees with the whistleblower. And at this point, we've got loads of them. We can't even hold in our arms all the witnesses we've got that apparently we're listening to these calls and we're very concerned about them. But I will point out once again, we don't need any more of them. Even if it's one who's much harder to dismiss in the way that they're trying to right now, we can all look at that transcript and we know exactly how bad it looks. And what's interesting, especially considering the tactic that they've used against Vindman is as Aaron Rupar pointed out, Fox and Friends was doing a segment on an army veteran and the true meaning of sacrifice about an hour after smearing a Purple Heart recipient who expressed concerns about Trump. So a little lack of self-awareness there. Uh, Donald Trump, uh, he hasn't gotten into the specifically attacking him for being Ukrainian thing, but he did tweet this morning, why are people that I never even heard of testifying about the call? Just read the call transcript and the impeachment hoax is over. Ukraine spelled incorrectly, said no pressure. Well, look, I, I read the transcript and, and I don't think it's over. I'm very concerned about it too. But I will raise one other thing that I'm now concerned about. This guy Vindman is a top official on the National Security Council advising Trump in particular on Ukraine, a topic that Trump would have you believe he's very concerned about. And he doesn't know who he is. He doesn't know who Vindman is, a top official on the NSC. That is a bizarre, that's a believable, but a bizarre thing for a president to say. That should be concerning. Can you imagine if Obama said, "Oh, this lieutenant colonel that I've had countless meetings with, who the hell is that? I don't know. Fox News would be decimating him over that. But Trump, he gets to just casually pretend that he has no idea who he's working with on a day to day basis. Anyway, we will see what Vindman ends up saying. We're still waiting for that testimony, but we have a pretty good idea and it certainly comports with what other people have said up until this point. Thank you for watching this clip from the Damage Report. For more content from the show and access to TYT Network members only exclusives, go to tyt.com slash Brooke. Wait, no, it's. TYT.com slash John. Go to TYT.com slash John to sign up.